This is what we would call a just tuning approach. So just tuning says to us that the perfect fifth is three over two and the major third is five over four. But when you play this scale in just tuning, it doesn't sound good. It sounds super out of tune. And so you have to add something called the Pythagorean comma to fix it, to make it sound like nice music. The other type of music that we use today is not just tuning, but it's called equal temperament tuning. Equal temperament tuning basically separates everything into like square root functions and then divides it equally across 12 positions. But does nature actually act perfectly like a cookie cutter separation cutting salami like this? Or does it actually have its own meandering way of doing things, right? More related to Fibonacci, for example. And so what I realized is that using this major third and perfect fifth relationship, I could populate an entire cuboctahedron. And how many edges does a cuboctahedron have? 24. 24. Now, it's not only me. Many physicists say this is the structure in many ways for us to consider regarding space-time. So this is called the vector equilibrium. The other name for it of the cube octahedron is vector equilibrium because it has an equal distance from the center to each vertex, even though it's a compound. It's both squares and triangles. So it's unique. It's the central thesis of the geometric solids that are referred to as the Archimedean solids. Pythagoras taught us this. It's pretty genius for his age. So. When you use just tuning, the reason why it doesn't work so well is as follows. So if I start with 144 hertz and I use 1.25 as the major third interval, 5 over 4, that's 1.25, it then takes me to from 144 hertz to 180 hertz, and then I do it again, 1.25, it becomes 225 hertz. So I'm just multiplying 1.25 times 144, and then 180 times 1.25 gives me 225. And then I do it again, and it ends up at 281.25. Now the problem is, is that I need to be able to get to this doubling of this octave from here to here, also through the perfect fifth. The perfect fifth could do it perfectly, but the major third cannot do it perfectly because if it were doubled, 144 should go to 288. So we've got this gap here of, you know, roughly 6.75 hertz that doesn't fit. So the octave's not doubling. How do we double the octave? This is the problem. If you continue this on, instead of going from 432 hertz, you'll end up at 843 hertz instead of 864 hertz. And you can see that this problem gets compounded the farther out you go. But da Vinci purposely put this 126 number on here. The 126 is also conspicuously pointed out by this B, letter B, backwards, as if to point right to it. There's even a fold on the page. It's not a book page. And you've got a six right here. Now at the same time, da Vinci was also writing in Codex Atlanticus this cube of Delos problem. Cube of Delos was a very, very famous problem. There are three ancient problems geometrically that needed to be solved by the geometers and polymaths. And these were squaring the circle with no measurements, doubling the cube, and trisecting the angle. These three problems were impossible problems. You can't do them without measurement. And there have even been proofs written in the late 19th century saying that they're absolutely impossible. But actually, remember, da Vinci spent 10 years on this. Probably, arguably, one of the smartest people in the world, if not possibly ever. Why would he spend so long on this? Well, because he was doing a lot more than just trying to square a circle. He was trying to give us a gateway, a portal into a higher level consciousness. So the Senate had to meet several times. 
They're like, what do we do? What do we do? We don't know what to do. This lasted for eight years. So they said to Plato, let's go talk to the Oracle of Delphi. We got to find out a solution to this problem. So the Oracle of Delphi said, here's the solution. You have to accurately double the cube that is the altar to Apollo in Delphi. This is the famous cube of Delos. All the architecture and everything they did had to be done just as God would do it in their minds, which God doesn't need to measure anything. It needs to all be performed through line intersections that are inherent. There's a beauty in this, right? So how much do you have to increase one side length of a cube in order for all side lengths then to then equal to a volume that is double? Because now we're talking the third power, right? Well, guess what the ratio is? 1.26. Now, using this information, which happens to be the cubed root of two, another way of looking at three over two. So the perfect fifth is three over two and it's perfect. But the major third, we're stuck right now with this five over four relationship, but the right answer is 1.26 put it right in the page. So not only did he solve how to square the circle the proper way, because you have to transverse, go from transverse waves to scalar waves. So Euler is the equivalent of pi in the scalar world. In the transverse world, it's pi. So he was so advanced, like way, way, way ahead of anybody else in how people could even conceive of this. And now he's also told us the solution for doubling the cube, which is a cube root of two. Guess what the length is from the belly button navel up to the upper corner where we found the Great Pyramid also, right? In that, in that slope angle, it has a 51843 slope. But guess what the link is? Length from here to here is exactly the cube root of two. And it's not supposed to be possible to draw it. But the entire Vitruvian man can be drawn, squaring the circle, using no measurements. So this becomes a construction box for higher dimension of understanding that solves the geometric impossible problems. It's hidden right inside of this. So just scale tuning can be adjusted now, changing only without a Pythagorean comma. We could populate an entire scale with the cube root of two as the major third and combine it with the perfect simplicity of three over two. It now changes it very slightly so it's not really 432 exactly anymore. It now becomes 432.081216. But you notice that all these numbers sum to nine every few digits. It creates a blockchain of expression of the undertone, an overtone series. You know, when you listen to a choir sing in unison,